Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at this Apple 15AV monitor. If you've been watching my previous videos, you know I got this one at Vintage Computer Fest Midwest 18, which was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and as a, I tested all of these out, all the things I got out uh, at the end of that video, um, you may recall that this one powers on, but it doesn't actually uh, get a signal. So what I did after that, um, spent a little more time looking, but what we've got here is a uh, frayed cord with a bunch of wires that have been disconnected. So hopefully that's all that's wrong with it. And if that's the case, I think we can cut the uh, shielding off here, reconnect these cables and see if we've got a working monitor. So stick around and let's see if we can't fix this guy. So before we do that, we need a machine to test it. And if you've watched Adrian's Digital Basement, you know he's a big proponent of making sure your test equipment is working before you plug in the thing you're trying to fix. That way, if your machine's not outputting video or something happens with the cables, at least you aren't going on a wild goose chase. So that being said, I've got a Performa 6214 CD here. Um, I know it can output video because I've got it up on my LCD there. Obviously, it's not booting, um, I think. Uh, I think I yanked the hard drive out of this one a while back. I don't quite remember. But anyway, it puts out a video signal, and that's all we need to test this monitor here. So let me get the camera positioned, and we'll start working on this cord. All right, so before we get started, I just wanted to give a close-up of this. You can see that there are definitely some severed wires in there. So what I'm going to do is cut the outer sheathing off and then see if I can't just reconnect these wires. Um, hopefully I don't have to cut all the wires uh, due to length issues with the ones that are cut here, but that might have to happen. So anyway, let's uh, get the camera up and start work on this. All right, so these are uh, pretty big monitors, so I don't have a ton of space in my workbench here, but I think we can make this work. So the first thing I wanted to do is just try to remove very carefully the sheathing around the entire cable um, without hopefully damaging further any of these other wires that aren't yet cut. Now, I don't know when this damage would have happened. Maybe it happened prior to this monitor being taken to the free stuff section at VCF Midwest, or maybe something got set on it, or maybe it was pulled when it was there. So who knows? But what I do know is that we can take a look at this and see if we can't fix it. You know, I've been watching some of those uh, hoof trimming videos on YouTube, hoof GP. Uh, I think there's a guy in Wisconsin that does one. I've seen a few of his videos. This kind of reminds me of that kind of stuff. Why is, Hoof trimming is so popular, and I should be able to answer that since I've been watching it. But those guys have, like, so many views. There's definitely not that many hoof trimmers in the world, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know the draw to that, but I should since I watch it. Anyway, we want to make sure that we don't cut the corium here. The corium's a hoof trim. That's not a, that's not a monitor term. All right, so looking at this, uh, we've got a number of wires that have been severed. Uh, at least one, two... Maybe just two. This blue one is thick though, and it seems to have uh, be a coax type wire. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. We'll have to investigate that a little more. Yeah, so there's also orange, and then I think there's just a lot of the structural string here that's been cut, so actually this doesn't look too bad. But I think we are gonna need some supplemental wires to reconnect everything. Nate the Hoof Guy, that's the guy in Wisconsin. That's his name. If you're into hoof trimming, yeah, check out those two channels. If you're not into hoof trimming, don't check out those two channels because you will get into hoof trimming, and I have no idea why. So looking at this a little more in detail, it looks like it is just the blue and orange ones here that have disconnected, but I think this blue one is a coax type wire. I can't be 100% sure. Uh, this green one looks okay. Red and yellow are okay as well, so I think it really is just two wires. So let me carefully take some of this sheathing off this blue wire and let's see what's inside. Yeah, it does seem to be a coax type cable. So there's the dark blue and then probably some negative signal on it. And then on the inside, the lighter blue, and that's probably a positive signal. And I really don't want to take any of the actual wire off since we don't have a ton of room to work here anyway. So just very carefully removing the shielding. There's not a lot in there. It's gonna be a little tricky to solder to, but I think we can do it. So I don't know if this will fix things or not. That remains to be seen, but what I can tell you is that this cable is never going to look great ever again, but that's okay. Function before beauty, right? I'm just cut some of these strings off that are in the way. All right, and then we need to 
expose the orange wire. And I'm just twisting the uh, the ground casing together so it kind of stays out of the way. We definitely don't want the ground to touch any of these other wires that are in here. All right, now we need to repeat the process on the other side, exposing those wires, cutting the strings out of the way, twisting the ground together. I really want to make sure nothing's touching. Things that should be touching, we do want to touch. Things that shouldn't be, we don't. All right, so we'll expose the orange wire. And then we'll try to very carefully expose this blue wire. Again, this is the coax one, so there's the outside and the inside. So I'll twist up the outside casing, make sure none of the sheathing ground wire is touching things. All right, now we'll try to get the inner wire out without me cutting my finger open. All right, we got enough of that exposed, I think. All right, so let's flip the soldering iron on. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to just directly connect these because they're too short and that will stress things too much. So I'm going to use some existing wiring. Uh, sorry, I'm going to grab some wires out of my wire bin here and use some of these. Um, maybe not this one. This one looks like it's a nice wire. I've got some wire wrap wire that I might use, but it's kind of just not super strong, but I think we'll do it. All right, so we'll do orange to orange. Twist those together. All right, and we're going to be using electrical tape because that's just what I do. Some people say not to do that, but there goes my electrical tape. All right, so the first thing I want to do is tin up this wire. Uh, let's use, where's my usual solder? Here it is. So I'm going to tin up all of these wires. And this blue one here kind of came untwisted. Let's retwist that. All right. Then I'll take my orange wire. I think I'm going to go a little shorter on this one, actually. All right, so next we have the blues. So I'm going to do the inner ones first because that's going to be, I think, a little easier. And for that, I will use, I don't have any blue wire wrap wire. Uh, let's use, let's use green. It's kind of a greeny blue, not as green as this green. All right, so we got some solder on my iron. I'll try to position things so I have a good angle. All right, I think we got a good connection there. So I have that with some tape. All right, then we'll connect that to the other blue. Again, I'll get some solder on my iron. All right, we've got a good connection there. Hit that with some tape right away. All right, and that leaves the outer shell of the blue one. So this one I want to make sure I'm really careful not getting any of the outer grounding wires stuck in here. Kind of been picking them out as we go, but I think it looks pretty good. So these ones we could almost just connect directly here, I think. Yeah, I think that's going to be the best plan because that way I don't have to run that larger cable through a wire wrap wire, which isn't very thick at all. So let's see if I can't... Just get these two to be good friends once again, like they once were. All right, seems like that's a solid connection as well. well this one I do want to hit with tape as well, since it is right by the grounding sheath here. Just going to kind of tuck that out of the way. All right, well, I think we're ready to try it. I'll flip the iron off, clean up my mess here. So again, yeah, no idea if this is the only problem with this monitor. It might have been in the free stuff pile because of this problem. It might have been in the free stuff pile just because it's kind of in really terrible cosmetic condition, but works. It might have been in the free stuff pile because it didn't work. This might have happened after it was there and it was fully functional and someone just crunched it. But the only one way to find out. Let me readjust some things here. All right, I'm also going to plug in the uh, speakers here. Hopefully they are not blown, but we'll find out. All right, let's turn it on. In the previous video, we know that it turns on, it has high voltage, you can hear it running. I have the orange light, it's green when you first turn it on, but it goes to sleep mode. All right, let's turn on the computer and see if anything blows up. Well, good news, the uh, speakers came through. And we've got the green light and I just heard it fire up. Adjust the brightness here. There we go. And we have a working monitor. Now this CRT is, uh, this is all the way bright. I think probably it's not gonna be as easy to see on camera, but it's not super good. And the contrast knob isn't doing anything. Oh, that's volume, the contrast. Yeah, contrast is all the way up, brightness is all the way up, and it's not super bright. This monitor doesn't have a ton of use left, but it does work and working monitors are good because they're not making CRTs very much anymore. So let's uh, power this machine off. All right, we'll turn the monitor off. And we've just got a couple of things left to do. Um, finish up the shoddy uh, patchwork I've done here. And then I'd like to do a little bit of cleanup on it. Let me slide things back around. So I think we can, should be able to just kind of go around this with the tape now. And we'll start at this end. All right. So I'm gonna do one more quick test to make sure that 
We didn't just break anything by doing that. And it slowly comes to life. You know, definitely usable. Um, there's also some crust and dust on the screen, so I think cleaning it up might make it a little easier to see, but it's not, it's not unusable. Um, it will be with any more long-term usage, but usage here and there I think is gonna be fine. Speakers sound great, so no concerns about that. So, all right, let's uh, disconnect things. And let's give this fella a nice clean. I'll hit it with some Windex here. I've definitely had dirtier monitors come through, but this one is, yeah, not a, not factory fresh either. And then we'll see if we can't clean up with some of the gunk on top that you can't see, but trust me, it's there. And those look like more uh, gouges and scratches than dirt. So I think we can see if we can't get those off. I'll, uh, I'll flip it down its front and we'll take a look at that in a minute together, but I did get some Definite grime off the top. I'll clean up the button here. Uh, we've got some scuff marks here. I think we'll try a different approach other than Windex for that. Clean up the headphone jack. It all looks to be in pretty decent condition here. That scuff came off really nicely. And then we'll get the base. So yeah, the base uh, is quite dirty, but no problem. So then we've got some scuffs here on the speaker grill. What I like to do for these scuffs is use a magic eraser. It seems to work pretty well usually. Also can try some uh, isopropyl alcohol to get it off, but I've had a lot of good luck with the magic eraser. Um, these kind of scuffs may not get everything off, but it does a really good job of getting most things off. Uh, one of the problems with using a magic eraser on the grill is little chunks of magic eraser flake off and go into the grill, and then you have to worry about trying to get that out later. But usually a little bit of compressed air will take care of that. So we'll just carefully see if we can't get some of these to lighten up a little bit um using a magic eraser it is a mild abrasive so it will actually take some of the uh, finish off the plastic so you want to be careful if you're using magic eraser you know there's nice texturing on these apple products that people really like so if you go too hard with it it'll definitely just remove that texture but here in the speaker grill not going to matter a ton and in fact this monitor is not in super great cosmetic conditions missing the door there's broken chunks of plastic down here, so anything I think is going to look better than how it was. But we're getting uh, some success here. I'm not sure we're going to get all this off, but I'll just give it a scrub here and see what we can do. And you can see on this streak here, not streak, but scuff, that it's taken off the surface and now there's all these little bumps that are left, and that's the actual texture of the monitor. So if we keep going on it, it's going to get the scuff mark off, but it's also going to smooth that area out and take that texture off. So I guess if you're restoring one of these, it's up to you what you prefer. You prefer having a scuff or you prefer having no texture. That's if you're using a magic eraser. There are other alternatives too, like isopropyl alcohol, like we talked about already. All right, so we didn't get them 100% off, but I think this is much better than it was. I might come back and finish some more of this later, but I think for now with this monitor, it's already not in great shape. That's gonna be enough for now. Let's tilt it on its face. And as you can see, the top is covered in scuffs as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can't remove some of those. And I'm not sure what's in frame, but the top panel's broken. This monitor has had a hard life, that's for sure. And again, we're taking off the finish of the monitor as well as the scuffs. So you can see that now that there's bumps in the scuffs, and that's because we've taken it off of where there is texture and left it where the texture concaves in. So we can't really get it without taking that texture off but I think it's gonna be looking a lot better. And again, there's cracked plastic down here, so not super worried about making this thing look factory fresh. Just enough where it's clean, and I'm not embarrassed to use it. So I'm just getting the sides here. They're about the same as the top, maybe a little better. And I'm also gonna get the cable. The cable's got some definite signs of neglect on it. But that comes off really easily with the magic eraser. I'll go ahead and plug it back in, make sure things are still good. All right, so we've got our green light and we've got our picture. Uh, I did drop a hard drive in this machine just so we can see how it looks. Yeah, and things look pretty fine to me. So uh, let's let it boot up and take a quick peek. All right, so we're booted up and this uh, drive is not the best, a little slow. We can go to monitors here. And as you can hear, the, uh, the speakers are working great. So that's really nice. And it sees it as the multiple scan display, so it's currently running at 832 by 624 at 75 hertz. Um, let's just drop it down to 640 by 480. Yep, and that 
support this as well. So let's go to 800 by 600 and we'll go to 832 by 624 back at 75 hertz. So this 6214 can only supply 256 colors of that resolution. Um, the Performer 6214 was not known for being a, uh, a workhorse by any stretch of the imag imagination. But anyway, as you can see, uh, it's working great. A little dim, but nothing that we can't live with. All right, so we've got everything working here. Our 15 AV, uh, gonna be a great monitor to use for things. I really love the sound on these. The speakers are really nice. Uh, unfortunately, like we'd mentioned, the uh, cover here is missing, but uh, can't beat the price. Free and just a few minutes of work to get that cable patched back together. So thanks to whoever donated this to the free pile at VCF Midwest 18. I appreciate you giving me another chance to give this monitor some additional life instead of just getting recycled. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.